welcome back to the Deloitte Women's Premier League show. I'm Asha Shin from Footballita and of course today we are back at the lawn in Deloitte for another really exciting episode and once again I'm joined by two fantastic individuals who are playing in the WPL here in Singapore. Of course with me I have Cynthia Tay from Arbrex Ligata. Thanks for having me. Thanks for making time as well. I know that it's Thank been you. very busy for you week in and week out. And also from Tiong Baru we have uh, Rochelle Chan. Welcome Rochelle. Thank you. Thank you. And it's also the first time I'm seeing the kit uh, for this season as well. Oh, so <laughs> previous, uh, previous kit. Yeah, it's actually very nice the colour of the, of the kit. So before we start the show proper, I just want to remind you guys that you can catch all the WPL highlights on the you know Deloitte Women's Premier League page. You know you can also follow SG Women's Football for more you know of the live streaming games every weekend, and you know you can also continue to watch the show because we're going to be giving out some really cool prizes in the weeks to come. Okay, guys, Match Day Four had some really exciting action, and you guys can you know watch the highlights in a bit. But for now, let's start with you know Rochelle. How have you been? You know, um, especially with Young Baru, you know, coming to this season. Let me know. I know how you've been enjoying the season. Yeah, I think uh, it's been it's been good. Like uh, the first day, we were a bit nervous, and moving on uh, our last game, our third game last week. Then I think the momentum is building up, and the team spirit is there. So it's been good. Yeah. Okay, and um, <laughs> you know, Cynthia, welcome to the show. You know, we've we've had Nadja in the first episode as well, your teammate. So yeah. since then, of course, there's been some progress because the league started. But I wanted to ask, Albrecht didn't really have a good start to the season. So what are your thoughts on on that? Yep, the team <laughs> didn't didn't start off very well. I mean, um, I, I can see that the season, uh, the seasons, the, there's a lot of great teams and a lot of new players uh, uh, that I see in the pitch. Um, but nevertheless, I think uh, the team did enjoy the ninety minutes uh, together, play together. And um, what most important is that every single game that we play, we do um, learn something and you know try to be better. And I believe that you know uh, you can get somewhere, and for this round, anything can happen in the season. Fantastic! You know, it's great, inspiring uh, way to start off the episode. And I'm going to ask you a little bit more about your journey actually in Albrex in a bit. Um, but, but first, I want to go to Rochelle, you first, because the Young Baru are very well known in the local grassroots football scene mm -hmm. for what they've done for women's football as well as the grassroots scene. So maybe can you you know talk me through that mm -hmm. and why you chose to join Young Baru? Right. I think um, the Young Baru uh, committee has been like really supportive. I think for the past at least four years, and I think previously they're on the. Uh, like the Woodlands Wellington also together so I think they've been really supportive throughout the years supporting my team so actually we we changed name a few times ah. it's our fifth name change yeah but uh, I joined this team because uh, we're we are like a family like we've been playing together for five plus eight years so wow. yeah, it's a nice it's a nice family that we have yeah so before it was always still bird for you or which teams were you previously with um so I've been with this club mainly throughout my most of my journey yeah, wow. yeah. So, yeah okay mainly. <laughs> yeah. you know so I guess if you're an aspiring young women's footballer Tiong Baru is definitely a name to get acquainted with in Singapore, right? <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Okay, Cynthia, I want to ask you because Alberex is very well known for the men's football and as you know, they've won the Singapore Premier League a few times as well. Yeah. Um, they've got a, quite a successful men's team, but how has the support been in general from Alberex for you as well as your teammates? Um, I think the club is amazing and nevertheless, I think the teammates are, um, are nice, they come together and well, Coaches, manager, sponsor were supportive, uh, provided us all the resources during the seasons. So um, I have nothing to ask and I'm very proud to be part of the Abrax team. And of course they have that Japanese age to them. Is there anything you've learned, you know? Because <laughs> Japanese are known to be very organised and you know, yeah. is that something you know that you, uh, you feel or sense within uh, your time so far at the club? Um, having, having Japanese culture in the team actually makes the player a better one, I would say, uh, because uh, we know that you know in, in a woman's scene, in discipline in one of, is one of the key component. Without that, uh, I don't think it will bring bring us to anywhere. So, I I think I'm pretty much adapted to the environment, and I'm pretty adapted to the club with all the the structure is being established. Okay, we're looking forward to seeing you as well um, yeah. do well on the season because we still have a long season ahead of us, guys. Remember that. Yeah. Okay. Cynthia and Rochelle, just want to ask you, maybe Rochelle, I'm going to start with you first. How did you get started in football? I'm sure that many of the girls, young girls out there want to know. What's your story? Who encouraged you to take it up? 
Right, so actually I, I previously used to play netball and uh, I met um, my current teammate uh, Monesha, she was here on the first episode. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so at that point of time she was playing both netball and football and yeah. I think uh, her, football, her football was really good and then uh, moving on a few years later then I decided to, I wanted to pick up football because I was thinking oh it could help my netball game ah. and then uh, I picked it up and then I never looked back, I fell in love with the sport and yeah, it's a beautiful game so. <laughs> okay, and speaking of Red Bean Pao, um, you know of course we've had, we've spoken about pre-game dishes and you guys can check it out on our social media but now I want to go back to you uh, Cynthia and I want to know as well of how you started in football, your story. <sighs> okay, to be honest I think I started playing soccer, was being intrigued by the boys playing at the boy deck. So. Uh, how they use the ball, control, and how they play all the kinds of tricks. Then that's inspired me that trying to make myself also be like them. So I, that's how I started playing soccer. And till now, I'm still in love with the game. A yeah. beautiful game as they say, right? How old were you, by the way, when you first touched the ball? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to disclose my age. <laughs> so <laughs> so I, I, I started playing when I was uh, 12. Okay. So now, so I, but I started soccer Pretty late, so I started like late seventeens. Okay, okay, in your then teens, I, yeah. Yeah, so I play at the club and you know got the national ball bit and stuff. Yep, that's how I got in. But your initial position, um, what was the position that you've always wanted to to play in? Or so you? I was uh, d during my time, coaches are very tradi traditional. So okay. Um, so I I didn't. I, I was not even aware that I was using my left leg to kick the ball. So, <laughs> so as I, my coach noticed, then that's where I started to play as number nine, the striker, then moved to the wing. Yep. And uh, as I uh, become more senior, then I become uh, played more of defending and right now playing the centre back together with my team, senior. Okay, and the centre back is a very, very important position <laughs> in general, right? Okay, I want to talk about some of the challenges you guys have faced uh, personally um, in your journey in football. Maybe I'll start with you first, uh, mm -hmm. Rochelle. What yeah. are some of the personal challenges mm -hmm. you faced? I think for me, like picking up a spot at like 17 years is most of my teammates. Um, it's quite a late age, so I think uh, getting there, okay, maybe we know how to run only and then like um, our touches are not good. So uh, I guess it's a challenge in picking, up, picking out the spot so late is like uh, the, the intricate, intricate um, touches that you have the ball. Yeah, then I think overall, not much, um, okay, not that much challenges. But um, I think the people that I've uh, trained with, trained under, they're, they've all been re really supportive also. La, so that's, yeah. Been that's nice, good yeah. to know really. Mm -hmm. yeah. What about <laughs> yourself? Um, what were some of the challenges? You mentioned, uh, I know when you were, you started a bit later, right, yeah. in, your, in your age, but besides that, um, any personal challenges, you know, that you face, perhaps, you know, confidence or something like that? Yeah, so every single time when you play a match, you always reflect yourself. Yes. So you, you will always think how to improve myself and how to um, make the team or how to get better to play together with the team. So that is actually one of the challenges that I, I always face. That, like I mentioned, Apex is a, a team, new team, new coaches and stuff. So we are all getting the momentum and getting to get familiarized with each other and how the style of plays and how the coach wants us to do. So that is one of the challenge. So the other challenge that I can think of, I guess, because we are all working adults. So juggling between work and training, it's kind of a commitment and it's a discipline, which is what Aberex has been cultivated Ooh. us. So I guess that is something that we need to give the assurance to the club and also to ourselves, so that to, to play our best during our game. Okay, uh, Rochelle, now she was mentioning about juggling uh, yeah. work and football. What about yourself? Yeah. How is that like? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I do agree. It's very, very challenging. So, I mean, playing, uh, doing a full-time job and then playing football, if, like, even though we are like part-time, but we are also kind of having the responsibilities of, of like a full-time football player. So, eating right, prioritizing training, prioritizing uh, your own fitness at the side. Yeah, so it's, yeah. Been, it's been challenging. Uh, it's yeah, right. trying to get enough sleep. Is there, yeah. That's right. Speaking yeah. of fitness on the side, right? So, what other, besides the normal trainings, what do you do on the side, you know, mm -hmm. to make sure that you are optimized for 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 the game? Yeah. 
Mm, I think uh, on the side, uh, usually sometimes I go for cycling on, on the weekends and then um, I'll go for recovery swims on a, after like a intense uh, training or matches and then I'll also go to the gym because I'm very skinny, oh, <laughs> trying to get up on the strength and stuff <laughs> like that. Yeah, so yeah. So what, what kind of sport has helped you as well? Uh? Any other besides football to sort of relax maybe or you know, like I, said, like I asked her to get into the optimum state, you know? I think uh, sometimes when you have that kind of intense uh, mindset, try to steer away from what you are doing right now. So probably you just like need to do something else that is not related to soccer. Okay. Read some books and watch some Netflix. <laughs> Any Netflix show that you're watching <laughs> at the moment? <laughs> Comedies uh, or something like that. So one of my teammates, uh, Hidaya, yes. so she's the number nine. Hi Hidaya. <laughs> so she was like sharing this uh, show called The Hostel. Oh. It's a very inspiring movie. So you guys should watch and I, I believe that you guys will love it. <laughs> Thanks for the recommendation guys. Check out The Hostel on Netflix. I think my mom has seen that one. Okay. <laughs> Sounds pretty good. Okay, Rochelle. You were formerly national team as well, and you do still stand a chance of playing in the Lionesses, you know, <laughs> since you're still young and all that. So, yeah. you know, what what are your thoughts on the current crop? I mean, I'm sure you've seen yeah. how they've been playing yeah. as well, right? So, yeah. can I get your thoughts mm. on that? I think that the current the current team has like uh, some of the players that have been around, so like Ernie and all that, who has been an inspiration. And we also have a lot of the younger players, which I think is good for like women's football in the future because we need to work on like gr grooming like younger players. So yeah, I think they've been they've been doing well, and I think yeah, like Singapore is supporting you girls. So yes, just keep hustling. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> and of course, um, we know we do have some of the match highlights for match week four now. So let's have a look at what took place at the stadiums.
Let's have a look at the standings right now, but a quick reminder that the WPL is going on a bit of a break, so do stay tuned for all the action when we return in a couple of weeks. Alright, both of you now have got a couple more questions before we end the show proper. Um, I want to ask as well, um, besides your own teams, right, which of course you have to be behind, um, which team do you think will be the biggest um, title contender this year? <laughs> Everyone says that one team, but you don't have to, you know. <laughs> okay, change. No. Um, Definitely that one team, <laughs> but yes. yeah. But also, I think Tanja Baga has been putting up a good fight. I think our next game will be against them, so I think it'll be an exciting match to watch. Also, yeah, wow. excited for it. But yeah, all the best against Tanja Baga. <laughs> um, and there are fighters really, even the men's team in general are like fighters. I, I think it's just the Jaguar thing. You know. <laughs> but um, yourself, um, any any strong contenders that you guys um, because Albrex have. You know, that sort of, I would say, uh, pedigree in, in football. And I think you guys can still go far, but mm. what's your opinion? I'm still being hopeful, being hopeful uh, with all the teams. And I think I really see really great teams this time around, this season, and everybody have different style of play, different kind of uh, way of doing things and stuff. So I would still feel that all the teams still stand a good chance to be honest. Okay, last question. Do you have any message for fans watching the show, those out there you know, who support women's football, who are sort of 50-50 about it on the fence? Mm. Rochelle, I'll start with you first. Mm. I think, uh, thanks so much for, for if you have actually went down to the Asian Stadium or like uh, watched the games on, on YouTube and stuff, I think we all really appreciate it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so just uh, maybe come from our games and see if anything inspires you. Yeah, so just yeah, have a picnic maybe at Yishun. <laughs> wow, that's a good tip. Have a picnic with a red bean bao. Cynthia, what about yourself? I think thanks for like you know all the support and all the um, cheering and uh, etc. During the game, not just only at Brex, I think all, all the other clubs. Uh, I hear a lot of fans cheering us out for everyone. So um, continue to support us, and we will. Never let you go, let you down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well said. Fantastic from both Rochelle and Cynthia. And once again, thank you so much to the both of you for joining me today in the WPL Magazine Show. And all the best to both Albrecht and Tiongbaru and for your respective careers as well. Keep making us proud. Women's football deserves the best, guys. And it can only be because of you all. So do come out to the stadiums, support our girls, share our videos, the magazine show, the highlights because we need it. So thank you so much thank once you. again for joining. Thanks for having us. Thank you. It's a pleasure and of course I'll catch you next week.